Bwana asifiwe na wasalimu sana wazazi wa wote na nataka siku ya leo kuwaletea mwalimu ambaye atatuongelesha wazazi jinsi ya kukaa na watoto wetu tukiwa manyubani najua kuko na challenge kubwa sana ya vijana especially the teens and we are very happy that God gave us these children and uh, God knew also these times will be coming and uh, it is important to know uh, that uh, when children are at, at their age they have a lot of problems you may think that you are only person going through stress but it is important to know that they could also be stressed by issues first because of the age uh, they are in they are having a lot of uh, a lot of uh, changes in their bodies and uh, it is important that you understand them so uh, we decided as a church that we are going to have somebody who is going to talk to us and give us some um, some some support how we can live with these children in matters of understanding them sometimes you think they are they are ignorant they don't want to listen to you they you know and you are almost mad i'm saying that because i also have uh, those children at my home and uh, it is good to know how do you deal with them and this time from uh, expert an expert or somebody who deals with these children every other time uh, mrs uh, catherine ndongo is a teacher and uh, so she understands better because these are the, the, the group, this is the group that uh, she deals with when at school and she also uh, is also a parent with teens in her home and so karibu sana mrs ndongo uh, come and tell us more about our children and how we live with them. Thank you so much as you watch and God bless you so much. I want to thank God today for this opportunity that I've been given by our Reverend and the church. More to talk about the teens and it's an opportunity of where we can sit down and try to help these teens. As the pastor has said, or Reverend has said, that we might be thinking that teenagers have, or teens have changed. But I want to remind ourselves, as earlier mentioned, I'm Catherine Dungo, and I am born again. I welcome you as we go together in this session. As the Leverage has said, the teens have not changed. Times have changed of this corona era, but the teens have not changed. They still remain the same teens, with the same feelings. And when I talk about the teens, we are talking about children of 10 to 19 years. And these students or these kids face a lot of challenges as they grow up. They face physical and emotional changes. So my topic was to help to talk about the parenting teens during this coronavirus or this COVID-19 era. Let me start by maybe noting that most of our parents, because I am one, we might be complaining or we are waiting as the president was announcing that the time when we shall reopen again, the schools is almost near and we are hopeful that our time will come and the students will go back to school but that was not the case so it is not we should not take it negative it's a positive thing that an opportunity that will be given by God remember it has come after hard years the other time we heard about it because that is history now is hard years that there was such a kind of a thing so it is rare and we have been given as parents an opportunity to stay with our children, to help them even as they go through these stages. Through this stage of adolescence, through this stage of uh, uh, teenage, with their problems of uh, the crisis, uh, with the challenges that they are having. What, as, uh, as the parents, what can we do? That is the question you're asking ourselves. One thing to remind ourselves is that we have been given opportunity to board with them. And I shall talk a few points on how to help these uh, kids. Remember, they have a lot of time. 
and at the time what, where they are doing nothing much by waking up and sitting, maybe watching the TV, they are open, exposed to a lot of content. Event initially, the teachers would set the exams and what to do, the assignments. And what happens? If the student does not have a phone or the child does not have a phone, you could give that child the phone to stay with it. So they are exposed. Later, you do not know where they, to which level they go and all that. The other issue is self-esteem, where they are staying at home and they feel they need somebody to tell them, to identify with. And remember these children, they, they are made by their own emotions of how they relate with other people. And there are other crises like identity crises, where they are going through them. There is the peer pressure and all that. We also have uh, a lot of other issues, underlying issues behind it. We talk about the, the, the drug and drug abuse. They are also exposed to uh, other sex, premarital sex, and then unwanted pregnancy. All these come with them. And as they grow up, what is the role of a parent? Or how do you help these students or these kids at this level? I will start by saying, one, love your child the way that child is. Children decide on how they feel about themselves in large, but how the parents treat them. Help their ch the, your child to feel good about themselves. Appreciate them of who they are. When, if you read the Bible, in uh, Revelation, from chapter 1 to chapter 4, and John was supposed to write to the churches, the seven churches. If you read the, 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 the initial thing he was saying is, I have heard about you, I know about you, and he was praising the, the, the church and the praising the church. Eventually he would say, yes, yet, the other things that you can, you have shortfalls. So it is important for the parent to appreciate their children on the small things that they have done. Reward them for the things that they have done, not necessarily by offering them something, but even offering them uh, kind words. Don't first always see a mistake as you have read in the Bible. First appreciate them, then note them if they have a weakness. Number two, accept them the way they are. Remember you have a lot of opportunity, a lot of time that you are with these children. I'm a parent and I'm staying with my children almost, almost throughout the day and even during the night. So accept them of the way they are. Number three, affirm them. Affirm them means Reassure them that, let them know that you are there for them. Listen to their concerns, their opinions, and their requests. Number four, connect with them before you correct. Connect with them before you correct. And most of the time, the, the parents become policemen. They, they, they collect before they connect. So remember to connect before you collect them, such that they'll be able to tell you what they are going through. Number four, support them emotionally. I always say, and what I've practiced in my, in my life, is that I become a friend to my child. And when I become afraid to my child, because I have teens, they always give me stories. And I tell parents, listen to those stories, however funny or awkward or jokes they are, listen to them, listen between them, and from them, you'll be able to learn something from them. Encourage them to talk to you. Listen to them. And when I talk about a parent, a parent is somebody who has a big head, big eyes, and big ears and one mouth. 
And those big ears, they are supposed to help you listen to them. So understand them. Remember, they are children. They have no change. They have feelings. They are going through their own life. As you go as a parent, you are going through their own stress. They are also going through, through their own stress. And they are wondering, when will this end? Some are feeling very lonely at home. Some are feeling uh, this is a prison. What, as a parent, how do we help them? Listen to them, help them understand what they feel. Be afraid to them. Give them unconditional love so that they will know, even as they go out there and they're harassed by things and they, they are having issues, the parent is there for them. The other point is parents should allow their teenagers to communicate their challenges. What is your child going through? But how will they communicate to you if you are very harsh on them? If they cannot listen, you cannot listen to them. And I have cases of, uh, I have had and heard of, of parents of students coming to me and they tell me, yes, they have said that and that, but my father, my mother does not listen to me. So listen to them and what they might be going through. Number four, and the other point is communicate your values with your child. What do you expect of them? What are the limits? You expect them at this moment to do what? You expect them to, to, to look for something, at least because of that free time, something to do. And when you give them some work, also expect them to run from that work that you have given them. Give them environment. In this environment, I mean supervise them. Don't leave them to do as they wish. Give them, teach them the basic responsibility and remind them that for every choice they make, there's a consequence. Every choice they make, there's a consequence, and every consequence, the best or the first beneficiary, will be them, either bad or good. The other issue as a parent, do not forget the importance of rules. And we have seen how rules work, for example, uh, the curfew time, even if the, you let them be as, uh, as children, don't forget the rules. And when you give the rules, be sure to give the reasons for it. I expect you to be here at, I allow you, because you are friends, you, they will tell them, you are feeling so bored at home, let us go to the neighbor and uh, do, or let us jog around. And when they come back, they, you, you, you assure them that the rule still remains, that maybe at this time, I want you to be here by this time. And why that rule? Make it clear for your safety and all that. The other issue is allow your teenage to have their own space. What I've observed myself is that these students, sometimes they wake up and they are bored and they have moods and they do not know what to do. And sometimes when they wake up, the daily routine may be maybe boring and uh, nobody like routine throughout. So what do you do to them? Maybe the best thing is to, to give them, talk to them and ask them, what have they learned or what can they do different in this corona time? They might tell you would like uh, to to have a talk, we would like to, to have games with you, we would even have to walk with you. And sometimes I have seen even when we walk together, maybe take a walk with them, you are free, you become friends, you talk so many things and they learn about, they will tell you what they are feeling in this era. The other issue, I would, uh, you'd help your child is to adjust. Help them adjust to this era or to what they are going through. It is not normal. They have not experienced it. Neither you have you experienced it, but at least you have at least something to tell them. Help them adjust emotionally. 
socially, that they cannot go visiting everybody. Not everybody can come to visit them. Help them understand. Remember, these students are also having a lot of stress, as the, the, the pastor has said. They are also having a lot of stress. So allow them. Have time with them to adjust with them so that they can adjust. Tell them of, remind them to cope. Help them to have the coping skills. Remember also to help them. Remember also to help them to learn more new skills. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, teach your child the way you should follow even when they grow old, do not move away from it. It is important to have time with our children. It is important to also be realistic. Don't assume that these students are okay. The students are okay. Don't assume. Talk to them. Be afraid to them. Play games with them. Look for something to make their life also meaningful, such that they may not fall into loneliness and depression and have stress. Remember, there is also a life after COVID-19. After COVID-19, how are our children be? Will they be like a cow which has been locked for, for some time and when the doors or the gates are opened, what does it do from the cow pen? It runs to the neighbors and then does everything else. So remember to help them to be who they are by giving them the values of life. The values of life can be honesty, trusting in God, and also having self-control as they live. In conclusion, I would say that as the parent help our children to remain positive, help them to remain optimistic, that is focused, positive thoughts, and also help them to be realistic that after this, there's another life after COVID. You'll be required to go back to school and to cope with life. So I, I urge the parents, give them unconditional love. Be friends that God has given you this opportunity. Give them love, be with them, be there for them. Talk to them more so that they can tell you what they might be going through or feeling. Don't allow them to be lonely. They are dangerous because when they are lonely, maybe they have a phone, they look for something to satisfy themselves where there is a vacuum. So let not your child have a vacuum. Occupy the vacuum by giving them conditional love. I pray that God will help you as we help our children. May God keep you. Even as we continue to talk to them, don't be tired to talk and share with your child. And the greatest thing we can lose is our children. Not to corona, but to life. So God bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen.